uh, good afternoon to you sir and to everybody over, present over here uh, i think it was the first uh, session uh, first uh, uh, conference where i kept on removing slides from my presentation dr ashok das sir has covered say almost four five slides from my lecture and remaining slides were covered by dr bharat sabu so i have just edited the version uh, right here online so thank you mayur for asking me to speak on this important and interesting topic now we all know uh, from the previous past lectures that it's a chronic illness characterized by autoimmune destruction of the beta cells and a dependency of on insulin for the survival or the lifetime dependence on exogenous insulin uh we all know that now the type 1 diabetes is divided into three stages stage 1 stage 2 and stage 3 uh, all the three stages are characterized by beta cell autoimmunity the stage 1 is basically normal glycemia and it is called pre symptomatic stage 2 is uh, dysglycemia and the pre symptomatic state and then the stage 3 is the full blown type 1 diabetes with all its complications and the complexities uh, of the management so it is a disease which is best managed by the prevention not by the intervention a bit more detail about the three stages the first stage is characterized by the genetic predisposition some amount of beta cell stress in the beginning of the uh, autoimmunity stage 1 the clear cut establishment of the autoimmunity but the patient remains normal glycemia normal glycemic the role of microbiome epigenetic and environmental factors and there is the beginning of beta cell stress the stage 2 this dysglycemia begins the autoimmunity remains there and stage 3 is the full full blown type 1 diabetes usually detected especially in our country with the onset of diabetic ketoacidosis the patient might be having mortality definitely increased cost of the treatment and sometimes mortality as well now why to predict and screen for type 1 diabetes Uh, the early risk identification is coupled with monitoring and counseling and education enables not only the earlier diagnosis but it also lowers the risk of dka at the onset of the symptom though the therapies to delay the uh, beginning of the stage 3 or to prevent type 1 diabetes are just for the research they are not there for the clinical usage but the one more most important uh, outcome of the diabetes screening and prediction type 1 diabetes screening and prediction is that it lowers the risk of diabetes cute at the time of presentation in fact in one of the trial that daisy trial only 3% of the children screened and detected they had diabetic ketoacidosis as against general population where 44% admitted with the diabetes ketoacidosis when they were diagnosed as type 1 diabetes also the prevention of diabetes ketoacidosis with timely intervention the insulin therapy the education the frequent monitoring of the blood sugar leads to the partial remission and also the reduced insulin requirement for a long time to come and it is also associated with better long time metabolic metabolic control so in as in populations where the background uh, incidence of type 1 diabetes is more there should be all efforts to do the prediction or the screening of for type 1 diabetes also with the advent of newer therapies uh, i'll just be touching upon them there is an opportunity to prevent or delay the diagnosis of stage 3 or the clinical type 1 diabetes and in say rare circumstances or in future in many of the patient the type 1 diabetes could totally be prevented now the recommendations from various societies the this is the i think the latest recommendation from eda that screening for pre symptomatic type 1 diabetes is now they have uh, accepted it usually for the research study or in the uh, of children who have got the first degree family members with type 1 diabetes so that the disease progress could be slowed down and there could be some preservation of the beta cell function so the leading societies are now also asking for the uh, screening for uh, type 1 diabetes and also there are certain uh, organizations like uh, uh, jovelan disease research foundation the ask organization the addict or uh, organization the trial net they are all uh, sort of uh, providing the screening for type 1 diabetes so that the stage 3 could be prevented delayed uh, better glycemic control could be achieved or the diabetes could be type 1 diabetes could be prevented altogether now this is the summarization of all the therapies they are all in the realm of the research or the trial like the local intervention to improve the beta cell function to reduce the beta cell stress and improve the beta cell mass the most promising tepilizumab is now approved by us fda in march 2021 the anti cd3 antibody and which had shown in clinical trial in human beings that the uh, type 1 diabetes onset could be delayed the resultant diabetes could be mild or the stage 3 can be prevented for some time so these are the things these are the important factors 
which basically sort of a compels us to think about the screening of or prediction of type 1 diabetes. It's again a slide which Bharat has already showed you. Uh, I'm just focusing on the autoantibodies because my presentation is on the autoantibodies. Uh, with the onset of autoimmunity or the destruction or insulinitis uh, of the beta cell, the first antibody is up to appear is the uh, insulin antibody, IAA. Then other antibody, which I'll be touching upon uh, in next few slides, that GEDA, uh, ICS 5124.2A, IC antibody, ZNT8 antibody, the, they all appear. And this is this second diagram shows the location of all those pancreatic antigens against which these antibodies are produced. Now, I think uh, this is one of the most important slides of my presentation. It shows the frequency at the time of diagnosis or even before the diagnosis, because in most of the children who are destined to develop type 1 diabetes, these autoantibodies would be there before they will be having stage 3 presentation or even stage 2. So these antibodies re remain a cost effective and easier method to predict the presence of type 1 diabetes. The persistence following diabetes, ease of detection, certain comments, and the recommendation for the screening. Now, the frequency at the time of diagnosis, the ILA cell cytoplasmic autoantibodies, it is 70 to 80%. It is least persistent. The detection is not very easy. The assay is difficult, but it is the gold standard, the sensitive and specific for most sensitive and specific for type 1 diabetic. Other ILA autoantibodies may be found in the general population in frequency of up to 1 to 3 percent, but this is very, very specific for the diagnosis of type 1 or the prediction of type 1 diabetes. The GEDA antibody, the most commonly known and most commonly used antibody, the presence is 7 to 80 percent at the beginning of the diagnosis. Even it is, it may be there before the diagnosis. It is the most persistent uh, autoantibody, can be found late in the life. Because of this, it is used for the screening for LADA patient or detection of LADA patient easily detected. The assay is simple now and it is for the detection of LADA. The GAD antibody may be more sensitive as compared to ICA and it is recommended for population screening. Can be done, the test can be done quickly and can be done at a large scale. Large throughput is, uh, is there. The IA2A antibody that is called the insuloma associated two anti autoantibodies, 60% present are at the time of diagnosis. They are least persistent but they are easy to detect and they are also recommended for the screening. The insulin autoantibodies 50 to 60 percent though they are first to appear so it makes them important for the prediction of type 1 diabetes rather than the follow-up patient because once the patient receives insulin uh, then the insulin antibodies and IA they are basically indistinguishable from each 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 other uh, the ease of detection is always there and they are also recommended for the detection uh, for the screening or the prediction because they are the first antibody to appear and in pediatric age group population, they remain persistent. They disappear with the uh, increasing age of the patient and they are uncommon in adult population. The ZNT8A antibody, 40 to 60 percent, a newer antibody, uh, uh, now it is being used. It is most persistent, again, easily detected. And sometimes this is the only antibody which is there before other antibodies are detected. In next few slides, you will see that it is not necessary that all the antibodies or any specific antibodies should be present. The presence of any one antibody makes the diagnosis or prediction of type 1 more likely. Presence of multiple antibody makes it more stronger and the increasing titer again makes it more, more and more stronger. So this is the suggested pediatric islet antibody panel, which includes ICA, insulin antibody, GAD, IA2 antibody and ZNT8 antibody, which is the newer introduction. The adult uh, islet and autoantibody panel is ICA, GAD, IA2A, and then again ZNT8 A antibody. And when the LADA is of concern, we should check the GAD antibody and ZNT8 antibody testing should be done. Now, these are the reference values. I'm not going into the details of the reference values of the autoantibodies, but just for the uh, completion, uh, these are the reference values. Now, the sensitivity and specificity. Again, this is for the detection of uh, type 1 diabetes and the prediction of type 1 diabetes. As I have already told you, the IC has got the maximum specificity and a reasonable amount of sensitivity. We had, again, reasonable amount of sensitivity and a good amount of specificity. Again, the IA2A, not that is sensitive, but specificity, specificity is there. With IA, especially in young children or for the prediction, the specificity is around 25%. And any combination is there because uh, I'm, uh, it is not necessary that only one antibody would be there. Some antibodies may be present, some may not be present. So this inclusion of IA, which is the first antibody to appear, makes the 
the prediction as well as the diagnosis of type 1 diabetes easier or more specific. Now, should single islet autoantibody test be ordered or should panel be ordered for the prediction as well as for the diagnosis? Uh, the caveats are no single islet autoantibody is present in more than 70 to 80 percent of the patient of new onset subjects. And it is advised that a panel of autoantibodies should be ordered. A single islet autoantibody or multiple islet antibodies, if detected, they are sufficient for the diagnosis, but probably not for the prediction. For the prediction, at least two autoantibodies should be there. Because diagnosis, because the, there is clinical background as well as the presence of autoantibody. But in pre-clinical condition, pre-symptomatic condition, in stage one, stage two, when there is no disc lysemia or only mild disc lysemia is there, uh, the requirement of two autoantibodies is there to predict. There is no way to predict which autoantibody or autoantibodies in an individual might be there. So other than to state that IA antibodies are uncommon in adults and IA antibodies are first to appear with the onset of uh, or with the preclinical stage, stages of type 1 diabetes. Now, clinical caveats about using autoantibodies assay in an established diabetic. We, uh, now, it is not for the prediction for the management. A negative result might increase the suspicion of an alternative diagnosis like ketosis prone type 2 diabetes. Negative results might uh, guide us for to, to perform genetic testing to rule out Modi. Modi. Uh, in, especially in pregnancy time, if the phenotype is not usual for the GDM, then it may be type 1 diabetes and could be detected with the help of autoantibody estimation. And again, if there is overlap syndrome, as Bharat has already told us, then the estimation of single autoantibody can guide us over the, for, towards the treatment. Again, the pitfalls of testing pancreatic autoantibodies, both for the prediction and for the diagnosis. A positive titer may not be diagnostic or may not be predictive sometimes. A negative titer does not rule out or, or exclude type 1 diabetes. Uh, when tested after diagnosis, initial positive titers may become negative. So it depends upon the time after the diagnosis or time after the initial insulin or uh, immunological insult. Most of the laboratories, they do not offer a panel. And if the we met, measure a single antibody, both the prediction and the diagnosis could be missed. Sometimes these are not standardized, they are still evolving technology. And I'm not sure about this, probably Dr. Ashok Das sir put, put light onto it, that it is, they are not very well standardized in non-white ethnic groups. Now the pragmatic use of autoantibodies after the diagnosis, again, it's an additional site besides the prediction. Basically, it is the clinical decision making whether the patient is having type 1 diabetes or not. If the ketosis is there, the age is there, then probably the autoantibody uh, uh, estimation may not be worthwhile if the case, case is very clear cut. Then again, uh, the detection of autoantibodies should support us for the diagnosis or a treatment pathway or to guide us for genetic testing to rule out Modi. Uh, again, as I've already to told, told you earlier that only GED antibodies are estimated by many of the labs and very few offers the other two antibodies, uh, that is IA2A and the ZNT8 antibodies. Again, if there is a doubt and the patient fulfills the clinical picture of type 1 diabetes, it is better to use insulin. And we can always take the help of the specialist centers who are well versed in the management of these patients. Now, what are the unmet needs for the biomarkers for type 1 diabetes, both for the prediction and diagnosis? For prediction of type 1 diabetes, GED, IA2A, IA, and Jordan 8 a antibodies are required. The cost is high, large sample volume is required. Many laboratories, they do the radio radioactive assay, so special permission is required. And there is low sensitivity in single testing. Sometimes serial testing may be done. The, the answer, the newer innovation, other antibodies. In fact, one antibody that is called the oxidized insulin antibody, which is also there before the uh, development of the clinical phase of type 1 diabetes. It is uh, sensitive, it requires a small volume, and the assay is quick and cost effective. Now, there are other platforms are being uh, developed where like usual antibodies like GAD, IA2A, ZNT8A antibodies can be detected with the help of ELISA and PCR. So increased throughput, more amount of can be processed and the cost would be rest. And now GDRF came with a point of care screening where the patient is sort of a, does a finger prick, put the dot uh, blood on different dots, send back the sample in an envelope and the results are declared online within four to six weeks. The cost is only US dollar 55, that is around 5,500 rupees or less than that in Indian currency. And it detects insulin autoantibodies, GED antibodies, and insuloma associated two anti autoantibodies. So IA, GED, and IA2A. So this is a perfect test for the prediction and uh, uh, to implement 
all the preventive strategies for type 1 diabetes. It should be offered to all the patients who are having high risk of developing type 1 diabetes. Now, next, last, last few slides. Besides autoantibodies, uh, there are multiple factors which sort of leads to the total clinical picture and the causation of type 1 diabetes. The various epigenetic factors, various phenotypic factors, and environmental factors, those could be converted into a risk score. Presently, the genetic risk score, uh, Dr. Dasar has given us a very, very uh, exhaustive, a very, very lucid background about the genetics of type 1 diabetes. So this genetic score, once coupled with uh, autoantibody testing, can give us a very good clue for the prediction of uh, development of type 1 diabetes and all the preventive strategies could be implemented. My last slide basically tells us about the screening strategies in population uh, sample. Again, as Bharat has already said that the type 1 is increasing by 3% every year in Western world. After COVID, there is a sudden surge or increase in the cases of type 1 diabetes and they are taking large steps at population level. So this is about one efficient strategy published just last month in uh, Lancet Diabetes. 25,000 children were included in the study. Before the age of two years, before the usual age of onset for type 1 diabetes and DKM, and they were followed up until the age of 15 years or till they developed type 1 diabetes. They checked only two autoantibodies, that is, that three ant uh, antibodies, that is GED, IA2A, and insulin autoantibodies. And they found out that when checked twice at the age of two years and six years, the test was quite sensitive, effect efficient, and cost effective. And they recommended this test to be done. And uh, uh, at a population level. And again, the frequency and the age group should be dependent upon the population specific disease characteristics. So this is now the first evidence, first study, which shows that the strategy, epidemiological uh, screening for type 1 diabetes should be done because it is associated with significant uh, improvement in the quality of life, prevention of morbidity, mortality, and significant reduction is the psychological econ economic stress on the family as well as on the society. So I thank you, Mayur, for giving me this topic. It was real pleasure to be a part of this wonderful event with all my colleagues. Thank you again. Very